Welcome to you all in a complex analysis lecture 4. In this uh, presentation, I would like to deal with integration in a complex plane. We already discussed about the complex in a complex plane. We discussed the continuity, differentiability, and also as well as some of the analytic function in complex plane. And also we studied some of the Cauchy-Riemann equations and also uh, deal with harmonic function as well as some of the examples related to analyticity also we discussed in previous classes. This is integration in a complex plane is a one of the important topic. Here we will discuss uh, which is very important reason because in certain application there occur a real integral which cannot be evaluated by complex integration, whereas the usual method of real integral calculus fails. Some basic properties of analytic function can be obtained by complex integration method, which would be difficult to get by other methods. The existence of higher derivatives of analytic function is a very important property. That's why we study integration in a complex plane. Some applications related to complex integration in, in many quantum mechanics, there are some applications related to complex integration, series expansion with analytic continuation, transformation between the special functions, contour integrals, evaluation of definite integral and series, invert power series, form infinite products, asymptotic solution, stability of oscillation, invert integral transformation, and generalization of real quantity to describe dissipation, example refraction index, and in energy, etc. Now we will start with an defining a line integrals in a complex plane. You are already aware of that in a integration in a real line. Here we can take exactly a similar way what we define in a complex pl real, real plane. Similar way here also we discuss in a real line, uh, line integral in complex plane. Here it is, we can see that it is a complex plane here. In this, there is a line is that, that is, we say that it is C. C is a line between the Zn minus 1 to Zn. Zn is, is a, we can integrate, we can make a line integral into, divided into subintegral. Let us complex, we say that it is a, let us define in a complex plane, uh, line in a complex integral. C, C is a smooth curve in a complex plane given here. And also the function f of z be a continuous function defined on this line integral. Then we can divide this uh, line into each subdivision, each subdivision here, here xi1, xi2, xn, etc. Which divides the line integral into n terms, xi n on C between xi n minus 1 into z n. And also, here we can make a sum of all these, means that is a summation from, from n running from 1 to n, f of xi n, n running, n is equal to 1, we get this interval, and this interval is xi 2, xi 3, etc. in xi n and xi n minus 1 we will get. This is known as the small change, that is Zn is a small change from Zn to Zn minus 1. If you put uh, particular values, we get Zn Z1 minus Z0, Z2 minus Z0, Z2, etc. will come. Let the number of subdivision from n tending to infinity such that delta n tends to 0, that is Zn minus Z. Then minus 1 tends to 0 and define a line integral i is equal to integral from a to b here, a to b from f of z dz. That is same as limit n tending to infinity i n. 
that is same as the sum of the limit of n tending to infinity summation from n run small n running from cap 1 to capital n f of z n into delta z n delta z n is the z n minus z n minus the result is the independent of the details of the path subdivision and also there is a evaluation between a complex and real line integral here we can give a note for this if i is equal to integral upon a to b f of z dz is equal to integral upon a to b because f of z can be expressed as u plus iv u and v are the function of x and y and also the z is equal to x plus i y means dz is equal to dx plus i times dy then here the line integral is here it is z naught means it is starts from x naught y naught and b is equal to x n y n. Here that's why a starts from x naught to y naught to x n comma y n and we can multiply these two. Here you know that u dx into u dx if you multiply these two, you get u of x comma y into dx and v of x comma y into dy because i into i is i square, you get real part of this. Similar way, if you multiply here imaginary part, i into v into dx as well as here u into u into dy. That is representation of u dx because generally we can write it as instead of u of x comma y u dx minus v dy plus i into v dx plus u dy. So the complex line integral is equivalent to two real line integrals on C, the path of line integral. Here we give you some uh, relations of the review of a line integral evaluation. A line integral written as integral upon c u of x comma y dx minus v of x comma y dy that is the first line integral is really a shorthand for u into dx by dt minus v into dy by dt into dt if a parameterization is given where t is a some parameterization of c means c can be expressed in terms of x and y in terms of t that's why x is equal to x of t and y is equal to y of t here t is called the parameter then that parameter is also lying from t naught to tf that is representation of here you can observe in the diagram t0, t1, t2, etc. Here x of t comma y of t may be lying in this line integral, then we can express in this way. Here you can observe here t1, t2, there is a jump between these two that is known as the time t. Here this is, the, this is some of the examples related to the line integrals are this is a parameterization of a circle. You know that general equation that is a circle equation x square plus y square is equal to a square. Here center is 0, 0 and radius is equal to a. Here we can express this one in a parameterization the path c goes counterclockwise around a circle. Here you can see here x can be written as a cos theta and y is written as a sin theta then that parameter t is lying that is theta value is lying between 0 to 2 pi. Then we can make it this using parametric condition. Exactly similar way another uh, example is related to here you can see this is the Part of a circle means upper half of a circle means <coughs> there is a semicircle from a to minus a. Then we can take x is equal to t and y is equal to root of a square minus t square and t naught is a to and uh, another one tf is equal to here upper integral is minus a. Similarly, if the lower half is line is t 
and y is equal to minus times root of a square minus e square and t naught lying between minus e to e. These are the some examples related to parameterization of a circle. While, while it may be possible to parameterize the c piecewise using x or y and both, as as an independent parameter, it may be remembered that the other variable is all, always a function of the parameter. Here we give you one illustrations related to this. Integral upon c u of x comma y dx minus v of x comma y dy means here x and y is a function of x because x is an independent parameter then we can express in this way and the line integral from x0 to xf. Similarly, if y is an independent parameter then x is in terms of y x of y comma y into dx by dy minus v of x of y comma y into whole dy. Here the line integral from y0 to yf. Now we will give some examples related to a line integral. <coughs> Here evaluate the integral i is equal to integral upon c 1 by z dz. Here it is a given in a parametric form c is lying from x is equal to a cos theta and y is equal to a sin theta and theta lies between 0 to pi. First we can draw a diagram in the Cartesian plane then here this is the line from c is a x a cos theta then this is a, a is the radius of this and theta is the angle here 0 to pi is there then although it is easier to use polar coordinates we will give in the next example. First we will give in a Cartesian coordinates with using Cartesian line integral form. First we can take a function f of z, f of z is equal to 1 by z, 1 by z means x plus i y form. You know that complex quantity cannot be present in the denominator that's why we multiply the conjugate of the denominator. <coughs> Then here x plus i y is a function, then x minus i y is the conjugate of that. Multiply the numerator and denominator, then this becomes x square plus y square in the denominator. It is in the form of a plus b into a minus b. <coughs> then separate real and imaginary part, then that becomes x by x square plus y square plus i into minus y by x square plus y square. <coughs> You know that circle equation x square plus y square is equal to a square. That's why we put x by a square plus i into minus y by a square. Here we substitute line integral. You know that i is equal to f of z into dz. First you can put u of x comma y plus i into v of x comma y. i into dz can be replaced to dx plus i into dy. Then multiply, you get a standard form of a line integral in two real line integrals. That is u dx minus v dy plus i times integral upon c v dx plus u dy. <coughs> then here, that is same as uh, u plus i v into dx minus v into i into u into dy. <coughs> this is two line integrals i1 plus i2. Then we can put here real axis is x by a square plus i into minus y by a square into dx plus here that is line other line because it is passing through y axis that is line integral become other line integral become zero. Then if you solve this equation my a to minus a into x by a square plus minus one by a square and root of a square minus x square. y of x is equal to root of a square minus x square form. Then this is first line integral becomes 0. Then i times minus 1 by a square a to minus a root of a square minus x square. 
You know that the integration of root of a square minus x square is equal to that is x into root of a square minus x square by 2 plus a square by 2 into sine inverse x by a. You have studied these things in your PU classes. Then we can apply the limits, then you get i into i by 2. This problem can be solved by using uh, polar form also. Then the second line integral, it is a 0 to 0 is there. Then it becomes 0 plus minus i into a square into integral upon in i2, integral upon 0 to 0 y by a square plus i into x of y by a square into dy. Then if you are applying here y by a square into dy, then that becomes 0 because the coordinates are zeros i by a square into 0 to 0 x of y into dy, then x of y is root of a square minus y square. Here the 0 to 0 means first we can make it into 0 to a and a to 0, the line integral. Here, if you are applying here, this become uh, 0 to pi by 2, another one is pi by 2 to pi, this is the another line integral then this becomes i by a square root of 0 to a because 2 times here minus and plus will be there. That's why we can write it as 2 times i by a square into 0 to a root of a square minus y square into dy. Then we know that the formula, this is uh, root of x square uh, a square minus y square is y by root of a square minus y square divided by 2 plus a squared by 2 into sine inverse y by a 0 to a. Here, if you applying the limits, this becomes a squared minus a squared is 0 here. If you put y squared is equal to 0, here y is there, therefore whole term becomes 0 if you are applying the limits. Then if you are applying here, the another a, a square by 2 into sine inverse a by a sine inverse 1 is pi by 2. Substitute you get a same result. Then if you apply i is equal to i1 plus i2 then i times pi by 2 plus i times pi by 2 is i pi. <coughs> and also by symmetry comparing z to minus z we also have 1 by z dz is equal to 2 pi i. And uh, another li uh, line integral example, evaluate integral upon c, z power n dz, where x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta, zero li theta lies between 0 to 2 pi. Then z can be expressed as r cos theta plus i r sin theta, then i into, this become r is a common factor, cos theta plus i sin theta means by Euler's formula, we can write it as cos theta plus i sin theta is e power i theta. If we differentiate with respect to z, then dz is equal to r i e power i theta into d theta. Now we can directly substitute because the theta varies from 0 to 2 pi here, then integral upon 0 to 2 pi, this is a contour line integral, you know that it is a simple curve. Simple curve means if a curve having a no self inter intersection, that is no distinct values are of t correspond to the same point. If closed curve means if one which end points here, this is end points are coincident, then we say that it is a closed curve. Simple closed curve means a curve having no self intersection and with coincident at in end points is called a simple closed curve. That is a notion contour here integral upon 0 to 2 pi r e power i theta to the power of n into r i e power i theta into d theta. Then if you integrate with respect to theta r is uh, here r power n plus 1 i is a constant we can take outside e power i theta of n plus 1 n plus 1 here 
And uh, here if you solve this one, ii become cancel r power n plus 1. If you substituting here e power i 2 pi into n plus 1 minus 1 divided by n plus 1. If n is not equal to 1, the value becomes 0. If n is equal to minus 1, this becomes 2 pi i. This results is this is a useful result and it is used to prove the residue theorems. Now we will discuss about a Cauchy's theorem. Here, if you do the Cauchy's theorem, some of the line integrals are more important. Here, there are three important relationships we must remember to prove the theorem. You know that integral upon a to b, f of z dz, if you interchange the limits, then that become minus b to a, f of z dz. And also, there is a, some partition of a path integral upon f of z dz can be expressed as integral upon c1 f of z dz and integral plus integral upon f of z dz into c2. Suppose here this is a two line, this can be make it into two line integral here one and this another two points means this is one and another one is two means f of z dz with respect to c can also be rewritten as integral upon c1 f of z dz plus integral upon c2 f of z into dz. Now we can use <coughs> this is simply connected. First we will discuss about our simply connected region. What is simply connected region means there are no holes in the region. Here there are no holes. A, any closed path can be shrunk down to a zero size. Then this can be shrink to a zero size. Now we will deal with a Cauchy's theorem. What is Cauchy's theorem says that if any function f of z is analytic in a simply connected region R, then integral upon c f of z dz must be equal to zero. Here, what is given? The given function is analytic in a region R. And also, another condition, what is that here? If the function is analytic, means we already known that the function is satisfies a Cauchy-Riemann equation. What does Cauchy-Riemann equation in Cartesian form? Because f of z can be expressed as u plus i v, u and v are functions of x and y. Means then that can be written as ux is equal to vy means dou u by dou x is equal to dou v by dou y and dou u dou v by dou u by dou y is equal to minus dou v by dou x. That is a Cauchy Riemann equation in Cartesian form. Using this concept, we can solve this integral upon c f of z into dz is equal to zero. Here, first we can draw a diagram, simple, simply connected region. First note that w is equal to u plus iv, then integral upon c, f of z dz is equal to integral upon c u dx minus v dy plus i into integral upon c v dx plus u dy. Here, this can be solved by two theorems. One of them is, you already aware that the important two theorems, one of them is Green's theorem, another one is Stokes theorem. Some of you already know that Green's theorem statement. There are two paths, f of z and uh, g of z are two line integral in a path. Then that can also be written as in a double integral. That is one form. Another one we can use in a Stokes theorem. In previous classes, you are studied about the studied the Green's theorem. Here we will discuss this one in Stokes theorem. Here we use construct the vectors a is equal to u x minus v y, b is equal to v x plus i into u y. Here x and y are the vectors and dr is the x vector into dx, y vector into dy in the xy plane. And the write the integral above as integral upon c f of z dz is equal to integral upon c a into dr plus i into integral upon c b into dr. Mean this become 
in the stroke theorem interior of c del cross a vector into z vector into ds plus i times integral upon interior of c into del cross b vector dot z cap into ds here z vector but here we can apply z dot del cross a is here you know that cross dot product, product you can dot into a triple product we can utilize here x y and z and do by do x do by do y and do by do z this is a delta and also a vector is u minus v and 0 then if you applying here that is do v by do x and do u by do y do u by do y is do v by do x then by Cauchy Riemann equation this becomes 0 Similarly, here del z, z vector means triple product z vector dot del cross b means x, y and b and del means do by do x, do by do y and do by do z and b vector is v into v, u and 0. Then here we can apply this is 0 into this then your remaining is do u by do x, do u by do x minus do v by do y. You know that do u by do x is equal to by Cauchy Riemann condition, do u by do x is equal to do v by do y, then this becomes 0. This is 0 means this term whole product becomes 0, this is also 0, then for this function becomes 0. This is the one simple uh, theorem to prove Cauchy's, Cauchy's theorem using strokes. Exactly similar way because we can make this function u dx minus v dy, it is a line integral. You know that it is a, if you solve by, uh, if you solve by using uh, Green's theorem, Green's theorem in a plane, this becomes double integral upon dou u, u dx minus v dy can be written as dou minus dou v by dou x minus dou u by dou y into dx into dy do u by do y into do x into do u by do y into dx dy means again if you apply Cauchy Riemann equation that term becomes 0 then this term is 0 similar way here v dx plus u dy means exactly here do u by do x i minus do v by do y means again do u by do x minus do v by do y means that is also Cauchy Riemann equation 0, this is 0 plus 0 because we can apply the path of line integration. Some comments related to this. The proof using Stokes theorem requires that u and v have a continuous first order derivative and c must be a smooth. And uh, the Gossard proof remo removes this restriction. Instead of this uh, continuous first order derivative, we can, instead of this, we can directly write Cauchy Gossard theorem using the Yabo theorem by Cauchy and Gossard are two scientists. They done this uh, theorem. They say that it is Cauchy's theorem. This implies that integral upon C f of z dz is equal to zero. This implies that the line integral between any two points is independent of the path as long as the function is analytic in the region enclosed by the paths. Means this is R connected region here C1 and C2, here A to B, then this is simply connected region 1 stars and ending with this means integral upon c1 f of z dz is equal to integral upon c2 f of z dz. Z then the both the values become 0. This is exactly a reverse process and also we can make integral upon c f of z dz can be written as integral upon c1 f of z dz minus integral upon c2 f of z dz means two independent two points at the independent of the path as long as the function is analytic. These two diagrams shows the R a simply connected region A it transforms.
and also now we will discuss about the extinction of a Cauchy's theorem to multi-connected region. You know that R is a multi-connected region and here R dash is a simply connected region, simply connected region. Here you can see here this is C1, C2, here we can cut and uh, here f of z is analytic in R then integral upon c of 1 c1 comma c2 c1 c2 f of z dz is not equal to 0 in general. Introduce an inf infinitesimal width bridge to a make this is a width to make a r into a simply connected region r dash and c1 minus c2 is not equal to small c1 comma c2 f of z dz become integral upon c1 f of z dz minus integral upon c2 f of z dz into 0. Since along the curve c1 and c2, small c1, c2 are in the opposite direction you can see here. And in thus, if we become, thus two become cancelled to each other, then you get the remaining is integral upon capital of c1 and another one is integral upon c2, both are equal. Unlike in Cauchy's theorem, now integrals are usually non-vanishing. Thank you. We will discuss the in the next class by Cauchy's integral formula. Thank you.